What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen, welcome back to Tactical Bassin, and welcome back to our final video in our spring buyer's guide series for 2024. Today, we're talking high-end gear. Rods and reels that came out of our rod locker that we use day in and day out. Let's go. All right, guys, we've made it to the final video in the Buyer's Guide series. You guys know we love high-end tackle. We know that you guys love it too. Some guys are passionate about high-end gear and you wanna know specifics of rods and reels for spring. Other guys just wanna see that high-end tackle and we understand that too. There is no price point here. Some of this stuff is really high-end. Some of it is surprisingly affordable because it is the truth of what we are fishing with. We each got a handful of combos sitting in front of us and we're just gonna walk you through them. Yeah, when we put this, sorry to cut you off. No, when we good. put this video together, this whole series has been spring bass fishing related. So as we were trying to dream up the, cause it's hard to limit 10 or 11 or 12 rods, whatever we ended up with, but it's hard to limit the rod locker, right? Like we're, 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 our rod lockers are loaded. Stack them in so there. We're like, all right, what are the key techniques that we need to be throwing this time of the year? So that's how we came up with this lineup. We came up with 13, by the way, when we were shooting for 10. It's just the number one thing that I like to do with a bass boat is rip whatever tackle or whatever rod organizer is in there out and then cram as many rods Stack in them. there as I can get. All right, we're gonna kick this thing off. Uh, you mind if I go first? Please do. Mega Bass P5 Destroyer. Specifically, we're talking about a jerkbait rod. Springtime, jerkbait fishing is a major deal. Talking high end rods, easy choice. This is in the P5 line. This is the 110 stick. Not the 110 special, the 110 stick. This is an amazing jerkbait rod. Uh, it's a little bit shorter six foot five, but the action is dead on. So I love to throw that 610 medium X pride, but I also love throwing that 110 stick. If you're a slightly shorter guy, you know, working a jerk bait, it's easy to hit the water because you're working that rod down. Or the gunnel. Yeah. That, that yeah. Bam. Bam. <laughs> oh, it's the worst. That 110 stick has the precise action that you need to throw a jerk bait in that shorter length paired to a Shimano Aldebaran MGL 10 pound fluorocarbon. You can go to 12 pound if you're throwing the bigger jerk baits, but 10 pound if you're throwing like the 110 Junior Plus One, something like that. That rod is insanely light, insanely sensitive. If you've never had one of those slack line jerk bait bites, like twitch, twitch, let it pause. You're sitting there, there's slack on the water, and you just see. All the slack jump and you're all just like, <laughs> spring jerk bait bites can be incredible and that is a fun rod for doing that technique. 100%. You need to be throwing a jerk bite, a jerk bait sometime in the next coming weeks. I mean, springtime is jerk bait season. Yep. Another one that is definitely time to be throwing is the lipless. Okay. Springtime bass fishing, you have to be throwing some kind of lipless, whether it's a trap that you're fishing over, uh, shallow grass or you're doing the hopping technique that we've taught but uh the loomis 855 cbr you guys have known i talked about it yesterday in yesterday's video we're fanatical about lipless crank rods you know having to catch those big fish keep them pegged we have spent a lot of money a lot of time sure. trying Lost to, a lot of fish trying to find the perfect lipless rod this guy right here like i said that imx pro 855 CBR is an awesome, I mean, it's a phenomenal lipless crankbait rod. It also is a great square bill rod too. If you're looking for a rod that you can throw multiple techniques on, but if you're a guy that's fanatical about lipless cranks, that is the rod. All right, next one up. Square billing. Just like a lipless is a bait that you're gonna have on the deck every single day in spring, so is a square bill. 
Yesterday, we talked about in the Mega Bass line, the Levante series, the flat side special. That flat side special is special. Special. Yeah, for <laughs> lack of a better word, it is. Uh, it's an amazing square bill rod. It's amazing flat side rod. It's an amazing uh, smaller square bill rod. It just does an awesome job. That Levante is a dream rod, but there's also a step up from there. I also enjoy throwing in the Orochi Double X series the flat side special just more sensitive lighter in the hand very comfortable to fish i have that paired it's not the highest end reel laying here but it's the truth of what i like to throw from 13 fishing it's the concept c2 the concept c2 we've talked about it in the past is one of those reels that is insanely light it's in the same ballpark as an Aldo, not as light as an Aldebaran, but in the same ballpark. It's extremely light for its size and for its price, it's crazy light, crazy light. That pairing is just so, so comfortable. And for me, square billing in the spring, day in and day out, 12 pound fluorocarbon and go. Speaking about reels, I didn't talk about reels on this last combo. Metanium, MGL, either an HG seven to, seven to one gear ratio reel or an XG eight to one gear ratio reel. When you drop that lipless and it's fallen and they eat it on the fall, you wanna be able to catch up to them and, and load up on them. So uh, I typically throw braid to leader, but uh, totally up to you if you wanna th throw straight floor or carbon or not, but that metanium paired up with that IMX Pro is a winner. Now, my, neck, my next combo, how do you talk about a spring fishing video without talking about a chatterbait. Yeah, this is just like the right down the line yes. key baits that you have to have. And in yesterday's video, we talked about the IMX Pro line. You've seen it now one and two for me, having those technique specific rods. They have those actions dialed. So we have the lipless rod, and then we have the 883 BJR bladed jig rod. This is a phenomenal chatterbait rod. I love throwing the jackhammer, that new Evo Elite by Z-Man. Uh, if you're into throwing bladed jigs, you need to try this uh, rod out. It has enough tip to, to really feel that bait vibrate, but it also has enough backbone. If you are fishing like emergent grass or something like that, you can rip it through and get that bait popping through. And then I have that paired up with the Bantam. Now that's that's by choice. I love the Metanium, but that Bantam just has that solid feel, has a that work heart horse feel. It's not, it's not that it's like a lot heavier or anything like that. It's just, a, it feels more solid. solid and you feel more connected. So with that blade vibrating, that Bantam is a must. All right, my next one up is one that I'm very excited about. This is the brand new Loomis GLX. I have just begun getting to play with it. They just launched. Just launched. Yep. But with that said, the GLX, specifically the 843C MBR, has been my favorite topwater rod for years. And I am so excited to have been able to grab the new one and break the tip off. No, <laughs> kidding. Super stoked to be able to get my hands on the most updated version. I've seen the same stuff you guys have seen, right? And, and from what I can see, GLX uh, has taken a complete revamp. I already loved the, the yeah. previous one. I mean, one of my favorite rods of all time, but updated reel seat, completely updated graphics. I take a look at that and, and I immediately see throwback to like the old, not IMX Pro, G Loomis IMX. You could get those in bass rods, multi-species rods, salmon rods. Those IMX rods were just like elegant, old school G Loomis rods. And the second I picked one of these up, I'm like, that's exactly what that is. That's a throwback to that old IMX vibe. Uh, the number one thing that I've read, again, I've barely even put the time in on the new one, but the number one thing that I've seen is that G Loomis was going for even more durability in the blanks. Uh, these rods are 100% built in Washington. They're US made rods through and through, which I think is awesome. Uh, just phenomenal 
from what I've seen and in the short amount of time I've been fishing it, this rod will literally live on my deck from now until November. Favorite topwater rod. I also double these rods up, an 843C MBR. That action is so unique, you can do a ton of things with it. Finesse spinnerbait, shaky head, finesse jigs. There's so many different things I'll do with it. I have it paired, it's not the highest end reel, Corrado 70 MGL. That's my true pairing. That is what I like to put on that 843C MBR for slinging top water all day long. Very cool. I'm I'm excited about those GLXs. You know, before NRX kind of came to the market, GLX was the standard. Yep. That was my first high-end rod. I bought that 852 spin rod. Uh, so it's cool to see that whole line get a, a a revamp because it seems like it's been caught in the shadow of NRX and then NRX Plus totally. the last few years. So and you know what? You say that caught in the shadow. One thing I immediately noticed because you know we're we're geeks about tackle. I'm not like a techie geek. You'll lose me on real specs. But when I start seeing like rod models, I freak out for that stuff. And there's a bunch of models in that new GLX that are not to be found anywhere else in all of G Loomis. Some spinning rods that were super unique. Uh, that jerkbait rod looks really interesting to me. Some key models that you're only gonna get in that. Yeah, looking forward to trying more of those and playing around with them. All right, next up for me. This is, we haven't talked about this rod or this line in, in the last couple videos, but this is the St. Croix. This is the Legend Elite, one of their higher end models. Specifically, this is the 610 Medium Extra Fast. Now I have this rod in here because I use it for multiple things. Uh, you can use it for bait casting for drop shots, light shaky heads, that sort of thing but I have it paired up with this reel right here. I'm gonna read it to you, because this is the Steez CTSVTW, T-Wing system. This reel is one of the most expensive reels I own. It's one of my favorite reels to throw. This is my top water reel. This combo is an awesome, awesome top water combo. That Legend Elite, it's light enough, you can, I mean, it's su super sensitive. You guys can see this flex right here. It's kind of tippy, so it's easy to walk those top water baits. It's easy to shake that drop shot. But in the springtime, you never know if you'll be throwing a worm or you're gonna be casting to blowing up fish up shallow. So yep. I love this combination. As we move farther into the year, and I'm gonna be fishing top water on a more uh, uh, an everyday basis, that's when I'll switch out rods and I'll go with that uh, Z crank. <laughs> From, he says, from, hold on, hold on. From Mega Mouse. He says, switch out. I've made fun of you for this before. That reel is, is high end. And I've made fun of you before because I know you own two. Yep. And I know for a fact he's not going to switch it out. Switch he's out. He's going to grab the other one <laughs> on his Z crank and get to work. But this is a phenomenal combo. So whether you like to throw light worms, uh, finesse techniques on that 610 medium, or you like to throw, I mean, you could get, even get away with throwing uh, light square bells, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. jerk baits. But uh, sensitivity and then the castability is awesome for top water. So I'm looking forward to throwing poppers and shower blows and that sort of thing. But this this setup is in my boat from now all the way into full blown top water season. A lot of times with really high end rods, you can get so technique specific, right? Like a Loomis 901, that rod is dedicated to one job, period, and it waits for its day to shine. But you also, in these high-end rods, can grab rods that will do a lot of things. Both are available in high-end rods. It depends on what you want. And in the spring, we are adapting to changing conditions, right? It gets hot, water rises, fish are pushing the bank, storm goes Comes away, in, blows everything out. gets yep. cold, water drops. We're constantly adapting. So you'll see a lot of our springtime rods. You're hearing us say, I use it for this, but I also use it for... It for yeah. That's because we're constantly adapting and that plays into our choices for springtime rods as well. All right, next up from G Loomis, IMX Pro 966 SWBR. This is our hands down number one. If you could only have one swim bait rod, that's the one. Yesterday, I talked about my favorite mag draft rod. I talked about my wake bait rod, but there are more times than not, 
if I don't know that I'm on a swim bait rod, I stick one rod in the boat, right? right? Just so I know I'm covered. And a box of mixed swim baits, and that rod will always be a Loomis 966, because this is the only dedicated swim bait rod we've ever found that can throw all of it. It can throw giant glides, it can throw medium glides, it can throw big soft baits, smaller soft baits, jig hook baits, treble hook baits, you can do it all on one rod. Paired that up to a Tranks 300 HG, that high gear is critical when horsing those fish and knocking them down and dragging them to the boat. That combo, if you can only have one swim bait rod, that is the deal. That rod has been incredibly hard to get over the last five years, but it seems like more and more they're in stock more often than they're not. They come in stock and then boom, they're gone. But now they come back in stock. They seem to be making more of them, which is great. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they bring that rod into that new GLX line. That'd be cool. All right, next up for me, the Mega Bass Destroyer P5. This is the dark sleeper rod. You guys know that we love throwing dark sleepers when we go north, but more often than not, this time of the year, I'm throwing a single swim bait, whether it be a swammer or a Kai Tech or whatever it may be, this thing can throw them all. It's not gonna be overpowered by a 4.8, right? So it doesn't matter if you're fishing open water or you're fishing up shallow around docks through emergent grass and you have to throw a flashy swimmer or something that's Texas rigged, that this guy right here can throw that swim bait. Like Matt said, you never know what conditions you get in the springtime, especially early spring, right? You could be on this awesome 70 degree day, whacking them, and then tomorrow it's 40 degrees with uh, you know muddied up water. So now you're adding some flash to your swim bait. There's all sorts of scenarios you gotta you find yourself in. So universal is also key. Paired that up with that Daiwa Zillion. I have braid to leader on there. Again, we love throwing braid. You have that X added extra sensitivity, low stretch. You have the versatility of changing out your uh, leader to whatever technique you might be fishing, right? If you're fishing open water, uh, uh, Matt Allen head with a Kai Tech or a swammer, and you have that exposed hook, you might throw a little bit lighter leader. If you're throwing a flashy swimmer on a, uh, a swammer on a flashy swimmer through grass or through brush piles, you might need to throw a little bit heavier mono leader. So that's why we throw that braided leader. But that, uh, that dark sleeper rod, it's even though it's completely designed to throw the Mega Bass dark sleeper, which right. it's great for, it also throws a lot of your favorite sized uh, swim baits really, really well. Can, can I add one more to that? Because I, I found kind of a sneaky application for that rod earlier this year fishing with you. Something that surprised me, you know, when we're on the road, we're constantly adapting, so trying to get that bait to work on that rod because that's what <laughs> you got. have right and i was very surprised with that dark sleeper rod and extra application the finessier spinner baits mega bass sv3 shimano swagey uh, war eagle screaming eagle those smaller profile spinner baits i was blown away how well they fished on that rod all right all right next one from saint croix Legend Extreme, high-end St. Croix. Specifically, this will not be a surprise if you've paid attention at all, 7.4 Heavy. That 7.4 Heavy is collectively our favorite model in the St. Croix entire rod family. It's just one of those rods that shines at a bunch of different things. When you need a power fishing rod in the boat in the spring, it's the deal and it does not get higher end and more sensitive in that action than that rod right there. Paired up to a Metanium MGL, HG or XG, that combo is insanely high end. When I'm picking this up, in my mind, I'm throwing a four to a five and a half inch swim bait. You know, Beast Hook, Weedless Kai Tech, uh, Weedless Exxon Swammer, uh, throwing the flashy swimmer, throwing a half ounce swim jig, uh, a lot of those mid, te like they're power fishing techniques, but they're not super heavy baits. That's a dream on this combo. You can also throw your smaller frogs on it. Like some frogs got giant hooks in them, some are smaller frogs. I mean the smaller half, 
uh, they do great on that rod as well. That's just a really good rod to have in the boat where you're like, I don't know which one of these 14 things I need to do. <laughs> I don't know if we're throwing big worms today, we're throwing a jig today, what we're doing, but I've got a rod that can do it. Right, and you guys know that you know throughout the years, we're always talking about technique-specific rods, right? The more you advance as an angler, the more you decide what you like to throw, what style of rod, power, and action you'd like to throw for specific techniques, you kind of you, you kind of go in that direction for those rods. And here we are talking spring fish, and we're talking about one of the most uh, sensitive, if not the sensitive rods that we own, using it for 14 different things, right? right? So springtime is a time, yes, I have a specific chatterbait rod. I have a specific lipless rod, but a lot of these rods, even though they're designed for specific things, they're really good at other things. Mm -hmm. And and when you're spending your hard earned dollars, that's what we're, we're trying to help you with. Because there's a lot of things, like you said, when you go out in the springtime, you don't know if you're throwing a flashy swimmer or a Matt Allen head, right? You don't know what you're throwing given the conditions. So that's why this next rod made the list for me. Again, you know, as we're thinking springtime, we're thinking about universal, we're thinking about definitely techniques that we have to be throwing. I went with this guy right here. This is a Steez. This is the AGS uh, seven foot two rod paired up with the Steez SVTW. This is an ultra light combo, but I use it for different things. It doesn't matter if I'm fishing deep, uh, clear highland reservoirs and I'm fishing a, a hula grub or an exposed hook jig, or I'm here on Chickamauga and I'm throwing our new micro rig. This is the rod that I throw that on. Straight fluorocarbon, it's ultra finesse, it's light, it's a it's a dream to throw, especially paired up with that Steez. I mean, this thing doesn't weigh anything, but throwing that little micro rig with a little 2.8 size swim baits on it, it's so easy to throw. And then again, getting back to fishing a shaky head or fishing a, a, a little micro jig or something like that, this thing is awesome and super universal. All right, next one up for me. We're getting there now. We're almost, almost not there. only are we almost at the end of this, we're almost at the end of the buyer's guides. Although we do have another video tomorrow. We'll get to that. Next one from Fenwick. This is in the world class line. 7-1 medium heavy. Again, paired to a Metanium HG. Uh, just one of those reels that you're going to see over and over and over and over. It's just, it is a high end reel. It's incredibly smooth, casts amazing distances, and has a ton of power, and that is hard to find. Uh, and you can beat them to death, and they take it. <laughs> yeah. uh, really amazing reels. Back to the world class. We talked a little bit yesterday, the day before. It's starting to blend together. Fenwick just revamped their entire line. Right after ICAST, that's where we saw the world class. Uh, we did a review of those new world-class rods. Uh, I'm very impressed with them. I like the overall feel. And in my lineup in the spring, I need a rod in that 7.1 to 7.3 medium heavy range all the time. That's going to be the rod that you see me start to panic and grab a Senko. That's the rod where I'm not panicking and I'm throwing a fluke. That's the rod that I'm going to throw our underspin on, not the mini underspin, our standard underspin. It's just, a, again, a fantastic all-around rod. It's right there in the middle, super sensitive, great overall flex to that rod that's going to allow me to do a ton of things. It's a light tip section. It's very, very sensitive, but I hit that backbone quick. So I'm able to throw a lot of different jig hooks, wide gap hooks, worm hooks, and I can just smash hook sets on those fish. It's really cool to see Fenwick kind of making a, I guess, comeback or whatever, if right. you will. But all right, guys, last rod for me. Again, I'm sitting there trying to figure out my rods, trying to narrow this thing down. And you guys know, springtime, we're talking about moving baits, moving baits, moving baits. Dude, did we get that far without an NRX Plus? Oh, you? we did. I don't know how. Here we are. But yeah, here we are. The NRX 8. 52. This is my workhorse of a spinning rod. You know, this is by far my favorite weightless Senko rod. Again, we talked about it in yesterday's video. As these, as this water temp warms up, as these fish start staging for pre-spawn and spawn, uh, these fish are moving up shallow and they're going to be moving in, up in and around laydowns, brush piles, docks, that sort of stuff. They're going to go to that cover. 
this is hands down my favorite weightless Senko rod for skipping, right? The 852, it's a two power rod, but you can do a lot of things with it. It is my my weightless Senko rod, but you can throw a Nico rig on it. You can throw a light, uh, you can throw a shaky head on it. You can throw a light Texas rig on it. It's a super universal rod, which is pretty funny when you're talking about an NRX Plus, right? right. It's a great rod for a lot of things. My favorite is that weightless Senko. And even though on a, on a given day when I'm out there fishing, I'm hoping I'm not having to pull this thing out, but given you know that situation, this is my favorite rod. If you see, you pull up to that dock line and you see those fish up just suspended some of themselves underneath that dock and you have to go something finessey, something weightless, skipping this thing up in there and just waiting for that doop. This is an awesome, awesome combination. Paired that up with that Xsense. We've talked about it a couple times through this, uh, through this series, but this is, for me, it's in that finesse line of Shimano reels. It's the top of the line for the US market in that finesse line, it doesn't get better than that. On the flip side, you have the Stella, that more power driven reel, but that accent, accents is super light paired up with that NRX Plus. I mean, it is so light. And that is what is what's really key about some of these high end rods. Not only are you getting awesome sensitivity, you're getting awesome durability and strength, but you don't have to, uh, it's, it's easy to throw. You don't even realize you've you've spent an entire day skipping a, a dock or, or docks or throwing a chatterbait or whatever. It's easy on the joints. It's easy on the body. It, it Tim just nailed it. It is so easy for keyboard warriors to jump on a thread, a board, a Facebook comment section and be like, you're out of your mind buying an NRX Plus. If I had that kind of money, I'd, who knows, whatever, yeah. right? Those guys are only considering sensitivity and price, right? They're like, I can feel with my ugly stick the same thing that, okay, that's fine. But outside of that argument altogether, try to take that argument to the guy who just had a shoulder surgery or has elbow problems or wrist Arthritis, problems. Arthritis, yeah. The tangible difference in the weight of these combos compared to lower price point combos is shocking particularly in techniques that you're moving a lot strolling jerk walking baits. top waters yeah. jerk baits all those things the difference in how you feel between using a lightweight forget high end a lightweight combo versus a heavier combo is night and day all right my last one is the shimano poison adrena this one is an interesting reach. We've been talking a lot about the strolling technique. I talk a lot about how I like to throw some of those heavier heads. Tim talks a lot about throwing some of the really ultralight stuff. But we also hinted in our strolling video that we think over time it'll get lighter, lighter and, and lighter and lighter. Make no mistake, we are always pushing it. This is the rod that I'm using for that hover rigging and strolling with those ultra light weights. Poison Adrena 610 ultra light. That's paired to an Xsense 3000. Uh, Tim just talked about the Xsense, so I won't go in deep there. Mine is a little bit <laughs> it's obnoxious. Got a little, a little kickstand on there. Yes, it does. Uh, I do enjoy high end tackle. I mean, that's just that's just the way it is. And every once in a while, a guy wants to be matchy matchy, right? It's all good. <laughs> but seriously, that ultralight can feather a little bait on that 196. Uh, you can fish that 132nd, and it's just. I mean, it is so soft, so soft. It's amazing, and it's just plain enjoyable to fish with. It's a really fun combo. It's it's that 13th rod. It's the one that could be in the video or could be left out, but we're having so much fun with that style of fishing that we slid it in there because we know we're not the only guys that are experimenting and expanding in that mid-strolling, bottom-strolling, hover-rigging, D'Amica, whatever you want to call it that style of fishing this year. And that rod is super universal too. Even if you had to pull up and tie on a drop shot or something like that. That's or roll up on some crappie in a brush pile. Like it a, will get them. All these rods and reel combos are phenomenal. This, like I said in earlier in this video, this is stuff straight out of our, out of our uh, rod locker. You know, some stuff is stock, some stuff is tricked out. 
Uh, but this is what we use and this is what we enjoy fishing. We have, we spend a lot of time on the water using this stuff, trying to find problems with things, trying to uh, learn uh, you know, different rods and reels and combinations for different techniques so that we can ex explain it better to you guys and uh, point you guys in the in the best direction when we're given our recommendations. And we get asked all the time, you know, what do you use for this? What do you use for that? Oh, yeah. And so hopefully through this entire Buyer's Guide see, uh, series, this kind of helped point you guys in the right direction, whether it was the right BFS gear or the right soft plastics or the right hard baits or the right uh line of rods that you want to you know stock up with for your boat this year uh, hopefully this helped you guys it is one of our most requested series of the entire year we love doing it but it's it's come to an end this is the final video for the buyer's guides now with that said we still we've been going new videos every single day and there will be one tomorrow as well with the buyer's guide series coming to an end we're going fishing Tomorrow, we'll see you guys bright and early. We're taking you fishing with us. We're looking forward to it. Let's go. Guys, as always, thanks for the support. Thanks for all the comments. Uh, we'll link all the stuff down below in the video description. But as always, again, thank you for the, for the support. We can't do this without you. We uh, enjoy hearing the success stories and we get the pictures and the, the different social media platforms. We see all the stuff and it's, it's amazing. So thank you for that. Uh, if you like this video, if you like this series, hit that thumbs up button, button like the like the, uh, the video and then subscribe to the channel. We're doing six videos a week for you guys. So hopefully you guys aren't missing them on the, on the different days and the different You're platforms. bound to miss one somewhere. <laughs> yep. That is a lot of it's, content, it's but we're doing everything we can to help. If right. you guys, again, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you tomorrow.